Well, good morning. This is Laura Desjardins, and I am the director of Southern California Astrological Network and the former director of the Michigan Astrological Association. And what I'm getting ready to show you is how a chart looks if you're using a 90 degree dial and how to technically use it. So here's the birth chart. I'm gonna use mine because I know exactly when everything happened. So here's the birth chart. This is the solar arc directions, which I consider the most important of all. And then after that, the secondary progressions. And the one thing you really watch with secondary progressions is the secondary progress moon. That's extremely important. So then from there, these are the transits where everything is in the sky at this moment. And you can see the moon is in the sign of Libra at 25 degrees Libra. We know it's right on the cusp of the fifth house. That means the next focus will go into children, creations, uh, where you shine in the public eye, etc. All right. There's a lot of meanings that go with that fifth house. Uh, and uh, But I've talked about some of the highlights, investments, that kind of thing. But we want to switch this over because the main reason I'm doing this is so somebody can actually see how to use the WinStar program. And the reason I like this is this Aries point is very important. It's giving you the point in the chart where you're able I didn't to get that. Did you try again? <laughs> I keep uh, this is Alexa and she keeps interrupting. <laughs> I need to shut her off, I guess. Anyway, so here, the Aries point uh, between this position and 30 degrees is where all the cardinal planets go. So you're putting in all your cardinal positions that were in the birth chart within that 30 degree section. So this is saying the node is about two and a half degrees approximately. Juno, which is an asteroid, which deals with relationships, is about five and a half degrees. Neptune is at seven and a quarter degrees. The ascendant is 12 and a quarter. Chiron is at 13, close to 13 and a half. Jupiter and Venus are both at 14 degrees of cardinal. Saturn and the cardinal are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn are all the cardinal positions. So you know you're putting them in here. Saturn is cardinal, and so is Mars cardinal. So you put them in there. And this actually is where they are if we did a 360-degree chart that shows you where they fall on that. So that's even fascinating. Uh, because in the sign of cancer, these two, they, sh they show you in here where they were when you were born, what sign they were in, like the sun is in Scorpio, Mercury is in Scorpio. Anyway, uh, the next 30 degrees is between 30 and 60, and those are the fixed positions. So you look to see where your fixed positions are. Now, fixed is Taurus. Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So I have the sun in Scorpio, so it falls at seven degrees fixed. This is zero, five degrees fixed, six degrees fixed, seven degrees and a quarter fixed. Pluto is at 11 uh, and a three quarters. So five degrees fixed, 10 degrees fixed, 11 degrees and three quarters is where Pluto lands. Then the planet Mercury, and here you can see it's at around 24 and so many minutes, close to 24 and a half degrees fixed. Then you have no more planets there. I'm only working right now with the uh, normal 
planets, they haven't added in uranium, any of that. And uh, I do have the ascendant and the midheaven involved in this. You need those always as part of this. So then the mutable positions are from 60 all the way up to 90. Zero is also 90 because this is considered a 90 degree dial. Up here it says 90 degree dial. So the first thing you're looking at is a 5, 10, and my moon is almost 14. So it sits at 13 something, almost 14. So that's the moon in Virgo, mutable. Then Uranus and the mutable are Gemini and Virgo and Sagittarius. Pisces, all mutable. Okay, so here you can see Uranus is at 16, almost at 17 degrees of Gemini. Uh, and then the midheaven is at 20 degrees Pisces. So now we know all of the positions and how they land in the chart. And we can see where they were in the birth chart. And I think if I highlight them, it gives you the exact minutes and seconds on each one. So that's another attribute of this program. And I love this program. Uh, and you can see the Pluto's 11 Leo, 46 minutes, five seconds. So it's doing it to the 10th of a second also. All the programs which are for masters have this. So uh, people who are doing this kind of a program, they need this for timing. All right, next, uh, I thought I would show you some things that really help to be able to see something in a chart. My closest sibling was born two years after me. And so there is this uh, node being touched off and the node and the planet Mercury to Neptune. Do you see it? So Mercury rules siblings and Neptune is saying a sibling's being born when the Aries point is on the node. Uh, now, that could be addiction issues. There can be a lot of things that go with a Mercury Neptune uh, that that sibling could have addiction issues. And most of my siblings did. I came from a large family and uh, the family, you know, is symbolic of the moon. Well, this moon, uh, the degree of it, and we have to we have to take this off so you see the actual degree of the moon, take it back where there's no uh, pointer on, but the moon is at almost 14. I have 14 siblings. So I thought that was, uh, there's 14 of us uh, total in the family, the moon. And I have a uh, moon at midpoint, so some planets here. So let me show you the midpoints now. How you get those you go up to extra and you go to the um wait a minute i have to switch this over to the data and then in data you're going to go down until you see midpoint trees and you want midpoints 90 trees but you want it to actually say trees so right there it is so if you look at my moon here, which remember was at 14 degrees, almost 14, it's at midpoint to Jupiter Pluto, which would mean a very large, uh, potent or established family. So you're going to hear her go off every so often. <laughs> I'm going to have to move her. <laughs> no. So here the moon is sitting at midpoint to Jupiter Pluto. Great position. Uh, because it brings uh, abundance through the family. But in this case, it actually shows how many there would be in the family, which I thought was fascinating. Again, a very interesting thing. So you look at the midpoints of each one of these planets, and uh, then it becomes kind of fascinating. 
Now, the midpoint for astrology, Uranus being the ruler of astrology, we would be really looking at that. So Uranus is at a midpoint here to the midheaven and the moon. The moon being in Virgo, the midheaven in Pisces, and Uranus is the only planet in the 12th house. So it really touches off that need to bring in medical, moon and Virgo, and intuition. So you can kind of read into what each one of these means. And I've been very successful with astrology. That's Jupiter sitting at the exact midpoint of sun midheaven. Now they're giving you the degree of orb. These degrees are preset and I put them in at a degree and a half. That's what Everton gave one direction or the other from the planetary position, a degree and a half to fit in to the midpoint. So let's take a look at that midpoint in a moment. But that really means that I've been blessed with a lot of publicity or positive things uh, with the knowledge that I brought in about astrology in this case. All right, or just anything that I decide to do. It doesn't have to just be astrology. Um, it's also real estate in my case. So each one of these has a midpoint. And so also with astrology, you're going to look to see, are there any other midpoints that involve Uranus? And here's one. Venus is sitting at the midpoint of Uranus and Pluto within uh, just under 30 minutes. So that means that was active uh, shortly after birth. <clears throat> All right. Then for something to be active, you need it to be at a, um, a point where it's giving you the uh, uh, one of the three points have been touched off by one of these three by solar arc. So it could be Uranus hitting Venus. It could be Pluto hitting Uranus. Either way, it then activates this midpoint right here, which is pretty phenomenal when you really get how this is working. Now, the other thing is uh, this uh, node here represents our uh, soul group. And I have a Mercury Pluto there. And uh, I would tell you each time this is touched off, there could have been a sibling, sibling born or dying. At this point, uh, there's only uh, five of us left out of the 14. So <clears throat> I have a, a large uh, ability to research uh, the family story based on this. All right, then after you look at these midpoints and you interpret them, my book is called Midpoint Keys and it's on Amazon and it gives you the interpretation of each one of these. Uh, but each one of these, you could write at least a page of information, if not more. So you can fill in the blanks, add more to that. All right. Now we're going to take it back to the extended and we're taking it back into the birth chart. And so let's take a look at one of these midpoints. The one involving Uranus was the key here. So we're going to move right now. I've got it set for Sun Venus. I was looking at relationship stuff, but this is the birth chart. When these two line up, you know, it's a birth chart. So Uranus sits at the midpoint of the moon and the moon and the midheaven, which means that uh, medical astrology would be something that I really do focus on. And then I want to show you that this other midpoint is very close. Mercury hits Neptune. That's a lot of the uh, intuition comes with this planet Uranus in my case. We all have it. It's just whether it's active. And then writing would be a function of Mercury to Uranus. So it's saying all these things that involve Uranus would highlight my career direction. All right. Now, I got to thinking, I know exactly when my parents died. And for a parent's death, normally you never want to look at that until it's in the past. Then you can look at it as a research thing. I would never look for death ahead of time. It's more important to uh, look at it in retrospect and use it as a tool for learning. 
So if it were the death of a mother, this is the second thing that I want to show you how to do. Actually, I want to show you first how to uh, activate a planet. So if moon Uranus and the midheaven are active in a chart, you want to see if there's any of these planets that have moved into position. Now, I was... Um, in 1972 was when I studied astrology. And so let's move this to 1972. Up here is where you know how old you were when you were uh, getting started. And it was, I was almost, it was almost 1973. So let's take a look at it and let's take it to that point of the uh, Aries point. And the Aries point tells you how old you are. And <clears throat> I was 27. And right after that, this moon was activated. And there were a lot of things going on here where this planet Mercury or Uranus was being hit off <clears throat> by the moon. Remember I explained that moon and Uranus all came together to uh, the midpoint was moon. Uranus set at the midpoint of the planet moon and the midheaven. So I was ready to start studying, which I was doing at that time. So by the time I was 27, I had the other key is Jupiter Uranus, which is uh, almost always studying astrology or something technical. It's a beautiful aspect to have. So there you go. The timing was right. And it tells you exactly when I was doing it. Then, and this 77 no longer works. You have to take it off of there to see the, the exact year. So by the beginning of 73, I started studying in the fall of 72, almost 73, 1973. And then there you go. That was the aspect. It's a wonderful aspect to have uh, for studying. Also, I had a grandparent that passed over here. That's a Jupiter-Pluto aspect. Again, all of this is in the book. So we know how this is all working. Uh, and you can kind of see what the signature is for each one of these. Now, I want to show uh, the passing of a parent. So you can really take it back to zero, zero. And then on the control button and the left hand key, uh, you're going to take the red moon and the red, red Pluto because we're moving those. So we want to have the red ones because we're getting ready to move them. So my mother passed or my, um, we should use my father first so I can show that one. That's Saturn Pluto. So Saturn's the father and Pluto is the passing of. So let's take a look. He died just before I turned 46. Seven. And so we, I know it was 1992. And let's take a look here. I have to take off the pointer for that to work. Always remember if you're trying to find it. So here's 92, and it was September of 92. So you can move it back just slightly uh, around the 17th. So what we're looking for is to put the Pluto and Saturn midpoint and hit it to the midheaven. Why? Because the midheaven is your uh, parent. Because it's also the it's also the nadir. It's both on a dial. It's showing up as both. So let's see if Saturn and Pluto hit that midheaven. And the Saturn Pluto is exactly on the midheaven. That's why I'm showing you this tool. I thought, oh my God, this is so powerful. 
because the way you would read this is uh, not only a potential passing, it's always potential. It's never absolute. And it uh, also means that there is a, uh, uh, in career, there's a ending of one phase of the career and the beginning of the next phase of the career. So this is a very powerful aspect to have. All right, now let's switch it. And again, the same things apply to the mother. And let's add in the moon. And the red moon is what we're going to get the midpoint on. And let's take that red moon over here. And then in, take it first to the birth. So you see what the birth signature was for the midpoint of the moon and Pluto. Hits the ascendant and the midheaven. That means that uh, definitely when she passes, it should be hitting this midheaven and or the ascendant. So now let's move this to the age of 67 and a uh, quarter because she was uh, passed in March. I was going to say born, but she's born to her new uh, resurrection, new, new path. <clears throat> All right. So. Let's take a look at it now. There you go. Moon Pluto hits that midheaven exactly. Hits the ascendant and the midheaven hits here. So we know this is the time it would have been exact. And it was March uh, 8th of uh, 2013 when she passed. So let's take this off here. So take the pointer off and look and see exactly when that was. There you go. It's right there at that point, close enough to what we're looking for. It's hard to get this exact, but you can see moon Pluto exactly to the midheaven. That also tells you that your time is correct. You can use this tool for anything that you're looking for. Just remember to also use the midpoints, but the direct is the other thing like Sun Jupiter is a great financial aspect when it's with Venus. And uh, there's so many other things that can go with that that are really nice to have. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, you can contact me 714-612-7335. If there's enough people, I'll start a class on this so you can uh, actually use it. Thank you for your attendance today. And uh, I thank the Cochrans for adding me in. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, who isn't going to say anything over here again. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye.